Let's get it on then, shall we? Mwah. Welcome to Sex on the Peach, your weekly hump day dose of everyone's favourite untalked about topic, sex. Let's get honest, let's get open, let's get comfortable, and let's get in to this week's show. Friends, lovers, listeners, happy Wednesday, happy hump day, and happy Sex on the Peach day. Or should I say... Happy Skets on the Peach Day, because skettiness is what today's episode is all about. I'm not giving science or history teacher. We are here to frolic and play today. Yes, we're keeping it fun, we're keeping it humorous, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a moral or a deeper meaning to be taken from today, so pay attention. I usually make notes for my podcast, but today I'm just allowing my mouth to run and I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit nervous and you probably should be too, but here we go. Now, we are in the full throes of sketty summer and if you are a fellow sket, an aspiring sket, if you have friends, acquaintances, colleagues, family members who are skets and you want to understand the world of a sket just a little bit more, then this episode is for you. In fact, fuck boys, if you want to learn how to do casual sex in a way that doesn't treat people with disrespect, then this episode is also for you. We all know that generally I don't like a rule, but if you yourself want to have a sketty summer, then this episode is going to give you some tips, some guidelines, shall we say, to live your best sket life and also how to protect yourself physically, emotionally, amongst the trials and tribulations of being a sket. Because we all know we'd have been burned at the stake back in the witchcraft era. So protect a sket is in full force today. Even as I begin to speak these words into my microphone, I can feel the feral sket rise in my soul as quickly and as furiously as the messages calling me a low-value woman or a feminist hoe come flooding into my DMs every single time I release an episode of this podcast or yesterday when I posted a photo of my ass on my Instagram story. And that is why my fellow skets, my sket allies... I will continue to be a voice for us against those who hate us. For everyone who has ever been sketch shamed, I've got you. Forget the Grand High Witch. It's time for the Grand High Sket. Let's get into it. In fact, let's get into it. Here is the rules of Sketiket. Okay, let's start with the basics, because I still get asked on a borderline daily basis, what is a sket? A sket is, according to the literal dictionary, a promiscuous girl or woman, or a woman who has many casual sexual encounters or relationships. And to follow on from that, Promiscuous means engaging in frequent sexual activity with different partners, okay? That's as educational as today's episode gets. So, what's the problem with promiscuity exactly? Well, the answer is, of course, nothing. Oh no, sorry, wait. How could I be so stupid unless it's female promiscuity? Of course. Huge problem. Huge issue. Obviously. And thus, the word sket was born as a slur, a derogatory term, much the same as slut, slag, skank. You know the drill. Because how fucking dare we vulva owners enjoy casual sex like our male and penis owner counterparts and think that's okay. Well, 
I decided precisely on the 10th of June 2022, I want it in the history books, to have the audacity, to have the goal to reclaim the word sket as a positive thing. That's right. I decided we're bringing scaredy back because it is okay for you, a woman, a vulva owner, to enjoy casual sexual encounters and relationships with different partners. And some men, some penis owners, have now asked me if they can also be a sket. And the answer is no. Absolutely no. Listen, I live for inclusivity. I live for us all working together. But sorry, no way in hell. You don't get to have sket for yourselves because you didn't have a male penis owner equivalent that needed to be reclaimed. You haven't lived in a world that called you out on casual sexual behaviour in a degrading and disparaging way and relentlessly shamed you for it. Even fuckboy is used in a trivial way in comparison. So what you can do is have the backs of the skets in your life. They could be your friends, your sisters, your mothers, your bosses. You can learn to be an exceptional sket ally. You can learn that it's completely 100% okay for women to enjoy casual sex in the same way you do and you can call your fellow penis owners out the next time they cry sket in a negative or deprecating way because it's not okay. The sket shaming has to stop. Whether that's someone dressing in a way that someone else deems sexually provocative, whether that's someone having casual sex, whether it's someone working in the sex industry, women and vulva owners deserve better than being reprimanded for behaviour or desires that are more sexual than society finds acceptable. Because who is this omnipresent god of society making these rules? Exactly, they don't exist. But since the beginning of goddamn time, women and vulva owners have been stifled and shamed out of feeling empowered to be sexual, empowered to be the sket they really are. Well, not anymore. I am here to help you celebrate self-expression, confidence and living life on your own sketty terms and how to take care of yourself while doing so based on a lot of learned and lived experiences. (laughs) So if you are ready to start sketty summer, fall, winter, spring, here we fucking go. Rule number one, no shame, no apologies. As we've already mentioned, society loves to judge, but remember anyone else's judgment doesn't define you. This rule is all about shaking off the societal pressures and expectations that try to box us in. It's about understanding that you are not obligated to fit into anyone else's idea of who you should be. Think about all the times you've been told to act a certain way, dress a certain way, or even think a certain way. It's exhausting and, quite frankly, unnecessary. Maybe you've worn something daring and faced disapproving looks. Literally, story of my life. Or maybe you've expressed an opinion and been shut down. Literally, story of my life. But here's the thing. Your value is not determined by what others think of you. Their judgments are often based on their own insecurities and societal conditioning, which I have a lot of understanding for, but it's time to unpack that and throw it the fuck out because we also live in a society with a mainstream media that convinced people voting for the reform party was an acceptable thing to do. So I'm going to say society is not the gal you want to be looking up to. Anyway, I digress. This is what happens when I don't make notes. Now, we all know There's a relentless push these days to love yourself. And to be honest, I think it can feel a bit all consuming and overwhelming because it's everywhere. Self love mantras on social media, in books, and even in just daily conversations. So I need you to remember self acceptance doesn't have to be another source of pressure. It can be a slow burn because I actually hate the idea that until you love yourself, how can you love someone else or 
even accept love from another person. You can allow yourself to be cherished and valued by others as you work on your own journey of self-acceptance. Actually, when you start to see yourself through the eyes of those who care about you, it can be a really powerful step towards embracing your own worth. Self-love and self-acceptance are about gradually recognizing and appreciating your worth, even on the days when self-love feels like a challenge. And when you accept and love yourself as you are, without forcing it, you become unstoppable. You become unskettable. I can't with myself. You stop living for the approval of others and start living for yourself on your own terms. I promise you I'm getting to the point of this rule. I am now in a place where I fully back myself. I have so much love for myself. I literally date and romanticize myself and I do not give a fuck. And people don't always like that and they won't always like that. In fact, some people will actively try and tear you down if they can see you are genuinely secure and comfortable in who you are. But the amazing thing is you won't give a single tiny fuck. I cannot even explain to you the amount of penis owners I have messaging me some of the worst things people have ever said to me purely because they do not like that I am a woman who owns my right to pleasure and confidently owns myself sexually. Notice they never have the vagina to say anything publicly. Come at me, you cowards. But they make the mistake of assuming or believing that I live my life and make my decisions for the validation of men and penis owners or the acceptance of a hypothetical future husband or father of my children. Bless them. That's just not how the most feared skit in the village moves through life. But they weren't to know that. God love them. But basically, living without shame and without apology doesn't mean you won't face criticism. It just means that criticism won't control your life. It means you have the power to choose how you respond to it. You can let it roll off your back or you can use it as fuel to keep being your fabulous self. And I want to believe that by embracing who I am and anyone out there who fully embraces who they are, we also give others that permission to do the same. It's a ripple effect of confidence and self-love. And there are so many people out there who are struggling with societal pressures and judgments. So if you do feel that way, it's important to remember that you are not alone. If you are looking to fully embrace your sexuality, start by being honest with yourself. Start thinking about what turns you on and what doesn't. Remind yourself it's okay to explore and discover what feels right for you without feeling guilty or ashamed. Share your thoughts, share your feelings, talk openly with people you trust, whether that's about fantasies, boundaries, or just questions you might have. Surround yourself with supportive people who respect and celebrate your sexual identity without judgment. Embrace who you are sexually with pride and with confidence. Your sexuality, your sketchuality is an integral part of you. And accepting it allows you to live authentically and joyfully. And we need to create a world where people feel free to express themselves without that fear of judgment or shame. And that starts with each of us deciding to live unapologetically. It starts with saying, this is who I am and I'm proud of it. So if you feel the feral sket deep within... If you feel like you want to have casual sex, if you want to have different sexual partners and the only thing holding you back is fear of judgment, it's time to let go. It's your life. Live it for yourself. Do you really want to be on your deathbed mourning all of that pleasure, all of those sketty summers, all of those orgasms that you held yourself back from having because of fear of judgment from a society that chose to name a boat Boaty McBoatface? 
for fuck's sake, just call me Sketty McSketface and be done with it. Seriously. No shame. No apologies. A disclaimer for a quick second. No shame, no apologies does not mean no accountability. We may not apologise for who we are, but we do apologise for shitty behaviour and these two things are not to be conflated. Owning yourself as a whole unapologetic person also means owning your mistakes and holding yourself accountable when need be because we all make mistakes and that's okay. It's all part of what makes us human. So, rule number one, keep it honest be bold, be fearless, and most importantly, be the sensational skit that you are. You have nothing to be ashamed of for enjoying sex and enjoying pleasure, ever. No shame, no apologies. Rule number two, don't fake it. Skets don't fake anything, not orgasms, not intentions, not energy, not anything. If you are actually a secret lover girl, actively looking for a relationship, I promise you, faking sket energy is not the way forward. I mean, can you be a sket and a lover girl? Yes, of course, we'll get on to that, but you can't fake it. If you are a sket at heart, you genuinely enjoy casual sex and casual relations with people. It's not something that we are putting on so that sexual partners or (coughs) men will think we're cool or chill or whatever it is we're supposed to be in this day and age. We just actually enjoy that lifestyle. Pretending to be into casual hookups while secretly longing for something deeper is like trying to convince yourself you're a morning person by setting a a 5am alarm every day. You're just going to end up grumpy and tired. The mismatch between your true desire and your action is just going to create a constant tension. You'll feel unfulfilled, you'll feel confused and probably a bit resentful because you're not being true to yourself and you'll probably end up taking it out on sexual or casual partners who thought your setup was genuinely casual. It's great if you are looking for a good time but if you're looking for a stable partnership, the people who are looking for casual flings will definitely pick up on your mixed signals and it will only lead to misunderstandings and heartache. Sometimes casual sex can help you understand what you like and what you want from a relationship. That's a great thing. It can genuinely be an amazing way to explore desires and learn more about yourself. But if you start feeling empty or emotionally unfulfilled after those encounters, it's probably a sign that you are looking for something more substantial. And it's just important to be honest with yourself about your feelings. The key is always be true to yourself. If you are a lover girl at heart, own it. There's no shame in wanting a relationship and being upfront about your intentions can save you a lot of wasted energy. That kind of honesty paves the way for genuine connections. And as we know, authenticity is incredibly attractive. When you are true to yourself, that's way more appealing than any fake persona you could try to put on. Unless you're a bit of a shitty person and the fake version is better, in which case, I guess, go and do some work on yourself. But confidence rooted in that authenticity draws people in because it shows that you respect yourself enough to be honest about your needs and desires. So if you are faking sket energy, don't do it. Embrace your lover girl vibes and watch how much easier and more fulfilling your romantic life becomes. Being genuine about your intentions will not only make you feel better, but also in time will bring the right people into your life. Because Remember, real skets don't fake anything. We live our truth boldly and unapologetically. We communicate our intentions and that's where the real power lies. By being true to yourself, you allow others to see the real you. And that creates a possibility for deeper, more meaningful relationships. And skets, lover girls, 
You don't need me to tell you that I don't want any of us faking orgasms, ever. It's never going to get better if you fake it. Sex is quite literally an area where fake it till you make it does not apply. So yeah, don't fake it. Rule number three, we are not fuckboys. Skets do not fuck boy. I mean, we do fuck boys. And sometimes, yes, we fuck fuck boys, especially of the straight musical theatre boy between 5, 10, 5, 11 variety. But alas, we are not the same. There is a distinct and important difference between skets and fuck boys, and I do not enjoy being bracketed in. So, my fellow skets, I need you to not give in to the fuckboy mentality because enjoying sexual freedom does not have to go hand in hand with treating people with any level of disrespect. Yes, we may enjoy casual encounters and non-traditional relationships, but our approaches and attitudes are worlds apart. A skeptic unapologetically embraces their sexuality and desires without shame or pretense. They are confident, empowered and straightforward about their intentions. Like our sexual partners know what's up. And if they don't, tell them. Don't let me down, Skettys. So, now enter the fuck boy. We all know one. Or 50. The fuck boy is infamous for their manipulative tactics insincerity and lack of respect for their partners. They thrive on a mixed signal, ghosting, emotional unavailability. A fuckboy might string someone along, promising more than they're willing to give, all while keeping their true intentions hidden. A fuckboy approach is rooted in deception and selfishness, and often leaves a trail of hurt feelings and confusion in their wake. Are there fuck girls? Yes. Are they skets? No, because in the world of skets, there's no place for the manipulative antics of a fuck boy. Skets, we are prioritizing our own emotional well-being and the integrity of our interactions. We know what we want and sure, are not afraid to go after it, but we do so with respect for both ourselves and others. And that stark contrast makes the skep versus fuckboy dynamic one of clear-cut boundaries and non-negotiables. Skets don't do fuckboy because we actually refuse to settle for anything less than genuine respectful interactions. I know that I feel empowered to ask for honesty and mutual respect, whether in a casual fling or in a deeper connection, because If I'm all about living authentically, I'm also comfortable rejecting anything that compromises my integrity or my self-respect. So let's play a little game that I like to call Skep versus Fuckboy. Take this in jest because please, we all really know that I want us to work together to make things better. And actually, fuckboys, I kind of forgive you because you're sketty, but just with terrible communication. But I hate you every time you hurt one of my friends. So ghosting, fuckboy. Direct communication, sket, breadcrumbing, fuckboy, mutual respect, sket, gaslighting, fuckboy, honesty, sket. You get my drift. Fuckboys, basically, you can, shock Cora, have the sex and the respect. I know. Unbelievable, really. So, what happens when a sket encounters a fuckboy? I mean, listen, it can kind of be a recipe for disaster because if you are all about clear communication and genuine connection, even in those casual settings, then nobody really has time for a fuckboy's mind games or their insincere charms. And it becomes very easy to see through a fuckboy facade. However, in my personal experience, and it might not be this for everyone, but all I can do is relay my story, fuckboy's and a fair amount of men in general actually, don't really seem to know how to respond to a woman who genuinely enjoys and knows how to live a lifestyle of casual sex. 
they don't seem to know how to feel when they don't feel in control of that dynamic. Obviously, because we've grown up in such a way that has sexually empowered the male sex and not the female. So I've found myself in the same situation many a time where a penis owner that I've set up a casual partnership with has then expected more from me in terms of commitment. And I have to be honest, I'm never really sure if that's something they actually even want or it's just because I don't. And it's just expected that a woman will develop feelings if you have continual sex with them. Of course, if someone does start to desire a deeper commitment, their feelings are completely valid. But all you can do, my skets, is be clear, kind and respectful in your communication about where you are at. Whether that's still wanting to honour the original dynamic you set up or acknowledging if your own feelings have changed. But in summary, skets and fuckboys operate on entirely different wavelengths. My skets, I don't want to hear fuckboy behaviour from you. A skety, straightforward, empowered approach to these relationships leaves no room for deceitful fuckboy tactics. By keeping transparent and open communication with any of your sexual partners, you as a sket can maintain your power and dignity in the chaotic world of modern dating. Skets do not do fuckboy. And even though, because we are women, we are, of course, considered far worse, it's actually what sets us apart in the best possible way. Rule number four, skets can catch feels. Yes, on the subject of the feels, you can catch them. That's right. You can absolutely be a skep and a lover girl at the same time. The idea that these identities are mutually exclusive is outdated and just fucking wrong. And I think this continues to play into the whole chill thing that society seems obsessed with these days. And that just because you can be chill with sexual encounters that you are chill about everything. But no, as we know, I hate the chill mentality because it's giving void. It's giving vacant. I am, to put it politely, batshit fucking crazy. My emotions are giving the roller coaster in Final Destination 3. I think it's three. See if I've made notes, I'd know. But yes, I am pretty chill with a sexual encounter. It's true. But being a skeptic doesn't mean that you are incapable of forming deep emotional connections. It just means you are living your truth unapologetically in each moment or period of your life, whether in casual encounters or in serious relationships. Just because you embrace your sexuality, enjoy your freedom and are upfront about your intentions, it doesn't mean you're cold or detached, which seems to be another bullshit misconception. I care a lot about my sexual partners and I wouldn't really enjoy a world in which I didn't. But Yes, skets are very capable of catching feelings and forming meaningful relationships. In fact, because we skets value honesty and authenticity, we are more than equipped to handle the complexities of love and intimacy when the time and people feel aligned. You can enjoy the thrill and the freedom of casual encounters while still being open to and capable of forming a deeper emotional bond if it becomes right. Being a skep doesn't cancel out your lover girl side, it enhances it. So if you do catch feels, approach it with the same honesty and authenticity you bring to all your interactions. You don't need to shy away from your emotions or try to hide them, just because it's expected that you won't catch feels just because you're a little bit sketty. 
Instead, communicate it openly in the same way you would anything else. That transparency is only going to lead to healthier, more fulfilling relationships when the time comes because there's no room for these mind games or misunderstandings. If you are genuinely enjoying casual flings, but you meet someone that feels special to you, instead of pretending your feelings don't exist or suppressing any emotions, embrace them. Have the confidence to express your feelings and the emotional intelligence to navigate that transition from casual to committed. If it works out, which I always will hope it does for you, my skets. This balance allows you to enjoy the best of both worlds uncomplicated fun and meaningful connections. I would consider myself a skeptic with lover girl potential. And honestly, for me, it just feels like I have the freedom to explore my desires, but I always maintain that I feel the depth to form real deeper connections if it feels right. I don't personally feel like I have to choose one over the other. I don't have a plan to be in a relationship at the moment. I genuinely enjoy a lifestyle of casual partners, but I think I will always be open to catching feels and I won't be afraid to voice it if that happens. So let's ditch the outdated stereotypes and embrace the fact that yes, skets can catch feels. You can be a sket and a lover girl and that duality is not only possible but also empowering. Whether you are enjoying a no strings attached fling or falling head over heels in love, just be true to yourself and your feelings. But listen, (laughs) whether you're a skit or not, sometimes catching feels can, of course, go horrendously wrong. Like just truly terribly wrong. Like my great demise of 2022 when I fell for one of my best friends and it completely blew up in my face. But hey, we live, we move, we come through it and then we use it as a cautionary tale on a sex podcast. So win-win really. Maybe we just think about whether casual sex with some people is really the best idea, which leads me to rule number five. Skets do their due diligence. Yep, investigate before you get intimate. Fuck, wouldn't it have been great if they rhymed? Investigate before you get intimate. Oh, never mind. Anyway, again, here I am to make the mistakes so you don't have to. Anyone who listened to the series finale of season two will know that I royally fucked up with someone I got sexually involved with last year regarding the status and intensity of their relationship. That whole situation caused a lot of pain, a lot of guilt, and a lot of trauma. It was an absolute dumpster fire mess, and I do not want that for any of you, or for me, ever again. So, if one of the defining characteristics of a sket is going to be an empowered approach to relationships and casual encounters... This empowerment includes doing due diligence before getting intimate with someone. Here's why and how skets should take the time to investigate their potential partners. Safety. Prioritize your physical and emotional safety. Before jumping into bed with someone, ensure the person is trustworthy and doesn't pose any risk to your well-being. This might involve a simple background check. Yep, it's giving Instagram stalker. It's serving FBI energy. But listen, shit can be getting crazy out there. We've all heard some terrifying stories coming out of the dating apps. So I would rather give it CSI for a hot second than end up in a bad situation. Or, of course, if you have mutual friends, a simpler way is just to get their opinions. (laughs) Drama. Don't do a 2023 peach. Avoid unnecessary drama. Yes, if someone chooses to lie and be dishonest about their relationship and you really have no idea, there is only so much you can do. But if you find something out, leave immediately. Do not continue just because you've set up a good sexual thing. Trust me, it is not worth it. Sket does not mean side piece. This isn't Ashley Madison. Try to find out 
who you are really getting involved with so that you can steer clear of people who might bring unnecessary complications into your life. This means understanding a partner's relationship status, intentions and emotional availability. Just do better than I did, please. I was a letdown to the skets and I'm sorry because we're better than that. Compatibility. Even in casual encounters, compatibility matters. Shared interests, values, mutual respect. That way, even if the relationship is purely physical, it's still enjoyable and fulfilling for everyone involved. Communication. Effective communication, as always, is key. Look for partners who are good communicators. That way, everyone involved can be clear, whether it's about desires, fantasies you're going to explore, boundaries, expectations. That kind of transparency, I promise you, is only going to lead to better, more enjoyable experiences. And while we're on the note of communication, mutual respect. Ensure that any of your potential partners respect your autonomy and again, your boundaries. Avoid people who show you signs of disrespect, control or manipulation. (coughs) Fuck boys. This will help ensure that your encounters are consensual and, again, enjoyable. And of course, very importantly, health. Sexual health is a huge priority. Have open conversations with any potential sexual partners about sexual history, STI testing, and what your safe sex practice might look like between you absolutely get on the same sexual health page so that you can enjoy a safe, healthy experience, especially as you and your sexual partners are potentially and probably having sex with multiple people. I know that sexual health always feels like an icky conversation, but get comfortable with getting uncomfortable because your health is important and needs to be treated as such. And when you know you are in a safe place with your partners, you are only going to have a better time. Approach all of your intimate encounters with the same level of care and consideration that you would apply to any other area of your life. By doing your due diligence, you can ensure that your experiences are safe, respectful, fulfilling And it also allows you to enjoy your sketchuality, not just confidently, but also responsibly. Rule number six, master being a solo sket. Listen, if you have a high sex drive and you are living that casual sexual encounter life, you're not always going to get that hit multiple times a day in a partnered way. Fuck, I feel like surprise rhymes are becoming my new sexual turn on. (laughs) Anyway, embrace becoming a sket for yourself. A solo sket, a masturbation queen. Embrace that self-sket love. We all know at this point, I can be a lazy as fuck solo sket, but I'm here to tell you how to make it better, even if I never take my own fucking advice, which would be very on brand for me. Listen, allow me the Pillow Princess solo play. I don't give it Pillow Princess life with my partners and sometimes your girl is tired. I'm joking. I do try to practice what I peach. Anyway, set the mood, light the candles, play your favourite music, use the sensual sense, whatever gets you feeling spicy explore your body, experiment with different touches and sensations and discover what feels best for you. You know I'm going to recommend that sexy sketty lube too. Fantasize, visualize, let your imagination run wild. We all know that fantasies can be a very, very powerful tool for arousal. So whether you replay a go-to favourite scenario in your mind or explore new fantasies, give yourself permission to indulge in whatever turns you on. Try different techniques, mix it up with different techniques such as varying speeds, pressure, 
or using different positions. I'm talking to you, Peach. This one is for you. Pay attention, you sex toy pillow princess. Focus on pleasure. Forget any expectations. Forget any goals. Focus solely on what feels good in the moment. That journey is just as important as the destination. So savour each sensation. Savour each sensation. Is that a lyric in something? And build up your arousal. We know by now that I love, oh my God, I've just realized what save reach sensations from. Stagey bitch, let's move on. We all know by now that I love a bit of edging. Although if I've been having an edging day of it, let me tell you, you don't want to be around me until I've finally orgasmed because I'm serving irritable, just a short tempered fucking nightmare, to be honest. But anyway, Make masturbation a regular part of your self-care routine. It's a very healthy way to release stress, to boost your mood and to connect with your body. Celebrate your body and the pleasure that it brings you. Accept yourself fully and enjoy your sexuality on your own terms because this also allows you to educate yourself and that knowledge can empower you to explore and enjoy your sexuality more fully and that's really why mastering being a solo skit is important because when you have multiple sexual partners when you are potentially frequently introducing new ones You need to be informed about your body so that you can inform other people because ain't nobody got time to just wait for people to figure it out and nor should they be expected to do so. So learn yourself what turns you on, what works, what fantasies you might like to try so that you can communicate it to people when you engage with them sexually. This means embracing your inner masturbation queen with confidence and curiosity because being an informed solo sket means being an informed partnered sket. Rule number seven, sket yourself up. Listen, sometimes we all have a sketty confidence lull, especially in a world filled with faceless social media accounts telling sexually active women that they don't understand basic biology and that because we have regular sex, our genitals now apparently resemble the Blackwall Tunnel. Like Huns, with respect, actually with no fucking respect, most of the time I can barely even get a tampon up there. So I'm going to suggest you go back to school and reattempt your science GCSE. But it all gets boring and it all gets exhausting. So if you ever feel like your sketty confidence could use a little boost, these are my personal remedies. Apart from the great sexual coma and reset of 2024, which took me about two months. But listen, we got there in the end. She's back with a vengeance. Well, again, we're bringing it back to self-love. Date yourself. Romanticize yourself. Treat yourself to a pampering session. Put something on that makes you feel sexy as fuck. That makes you feel like you are attending the Sket Gala a legit event I'm working on making happen. Hold fire for that. We'll see. And thank you, Duncan Burt, for the name inspiration. Literally, dance around your room in a sexy as fuck lighting state in your favourite lingerie. Confidence starts with feeling good in your own skin. So embrace your body with only love and only appreciation. And remember this. Confidence is is not about perfection. It is not about the ridiculous filtered curated images that we see on Instagram every day that are more than likely AI images in this day and age. It's about owning who you are and celebrating your unique brand of sexy, your unique brand of sketty. Listen to your body's cues and explore what turns you on. Confidence in the bedroom or wherever your adventures take you Come from knowing and loving what you want. Embrace spontaneity. Embrace playfulness. Surprise yourself with a spontaneous date night. Indulge in some naughty role play fantasies. Allow yourself to just enjoy you. When you are having fun and feeling free, your sexual confidence will naturally start to recover itself. Skettiness starts with self love 
confidence and a playful attitude. You basically have to just allow yourself to be a silly bitch. Being a woman has felt equated with emotional pain for far too long and it doesn't have to be that way. Allow yourself to feel good for no fucking reason. Give yourself that permission. Yes, the social media incels will always continue to put us down because a sexually empowered woman is still seen as a threat, a menace, a demon to society. So don't put yourselves down. And when you have those moments of doubt, allow them to exist. Then allow them to pass. Remind yourselves you deserve better and that you're well within your rights to desire sex and pleasure. Otherwise, you're just doing your clitoris a disservice considering pleasure is its only function. What a job. What an existence. And if you are currently in a sketty confidence crisis, please make sure you do not break rule number eight. We do not shame other skets. In the world of skets, there is a fundamental principle, and that is, we do not shame the other skets. This needs to be more than just a rule. It is a commitment to creating a culture of acceptance, of support, of empowerment in a society where sexual norms and expectations can be restrictive or discriminatory. The ethos of not shaming other skets challenges those conventions. It asserts that every person's sexuality is valid and worthy of respect, regardless of whether it aligns with traditional norms or not. This encourages people to embrace their desires and identities fully, free from the bullshit pressures of conforming to external standards. This means respecting each skets right to explore and express their sexuality without judgment. Listen, we skets come from diverse backgrounds. We have varied experiences, varied desires, varied preferences. And regardless of anyone's choices, every single sket deserves to be valued for their authenticity and autonomy. Have I ever shamed a fellow sket? Yes. And that was because I felt shame myself. Because I I felt like I couldn't live as openly and authentically as I wanted to. So if you ever feel the need to shame someone for their sketty behaviour, I implore you to ask yourself, why? Even if you have no desire to sket up your life, why does someone else's sket life bother you? I get a lot of shit for living openly and authentically, but it's very easy not to care because I am secure in my choices. But when I wasn't, I was almost angry at people who were. I didn't know I could live my life like Samantha Jones and it would all be okay. Not only okay, that it would be better. And listen, she was shamed a lot by her fellow Sex and the City gals, a problematic program in many ways, not least that in itself. But let's celebrate it for some of the things that it got right. Samantha Jones was a character that paved a path for women to feel empowered about being sexual. And so by refusing to shame others, it cultivates an environment where everyone feels safe to be themselves. Build bridges, not barriers, and lift each other up as we all navigate the complexities of modern relationships and sexuality in whatever way that means for us. In doing so, we pave the way for a more inclusive, compassionate and empowering community for the skets of the world. We also do not compete with other skets, nor use them as threats. Skets are not threats. Skets are our friends. There are more than enough sexual partners to go around. We prioritise solidarity and mutual respect amongst the skets because God knows our journey here was paved with rappers calling us hoes whilst our male counterparts were championed as players. If you are a sket, you know how fucking shitty it can be. So, love thy fellow sket. This brings me to rule number nine. Skets 
are not snakes and don't deserve to be treated as so. So listen, I want the word sket to evolve to represent more than just a label. I want it to embody a mindset of sexual empowerment and authenticity. Contrary to what people might seem to think, being a sket doesn't mean you are destined to cheat in a relationship. But Peach, you've admitted to cheating. I hear you cry. Yes, but that's not because I was a sket. It's because I was a cheat. Because I didn't know how to communicate or how to leave a destructive relationship. It was nothing to do with being a sket and all to do with being emotionally immature because I'm skettier than ever and would I ever cheat again? Absolutely no fucking way in hell. No. Being a sket does not equate to betrayal in relationships because it's actually about confidently owning your desires and being upfront about what you want. Skets value honesty, clear communication, respect for boundaries, creating an environment where everyone feels empowered to express themselves authentically. By embracing this mindset, skets prioritize building genuine connections based on trust and mutual understanding rather than engaging in deceitful behavior. Being a sket means celebrating your sexuality with integrity and ensuring that all interactions are grounded in honesty and respect. Skets navigate their love lives with clarity and self-assurance. Whether enjoying casual flings or seeking committed partnerships, I, the Grand High Sket, pledged to uphold respect and ethical behaviour. I understand that healthy relationships thrive on communication and consent and will always actively be promoting these values. Also, here's a plot twist for you. Believe it or not, we can just bring that sket energy straight into our relationships by using it to embrace a bold, confident approach to intimacy, sex and connection. It's about openly sharing what you want, keeping things spontaneous diving into new adventures together. So if you are with someone who was once used to having multiple partners and you've decided you want to commit to one person, that might mean exploring some fantasies together. It might mean playing around with some role play. Yes, it can take some navigating to transition from multiple partners to one. But if you want to do it, there are many ways to make that work in a fun and very sustainable way. You will indeed meet many, many people who are living in the past and will judge you for your sexual past and say they don't want a sket as a partner. They are not your people. Just leave them to live in their misguided pasts and let them pursue their untouched partners, their Virgin Marys. Bye bye in the bin and not the recycling. We don't ever want you coming back. But yes, let's debunk the misconception. Being a sket doesn't mean someone is inclined to cheat and don't let people treat you with that stereotype. It's time to ditch the nonsense and recognise that skets are just about embracing their desires openly and honestly. Let's stop assuming and start understanding. Stop judging based on old ass labels. Appreciate the real intentions and values behind them. Embracing the sket lifestyle is a declaration of self-confidence and self-respect because it's not about playing games or causing drama. It's about sexual and genuine connections built on respect and plenty of flirtatious fucking fun. By breaking those archaic stereotypes and embracing a positive, respectful approach to love and lust... Skets are rewriting the rules of modern romance with confidence and responsibility. Get with the program. Stereotypes are out. Skets are in. Last one. Rule number 10. Have fun. Being a sket is about celebrating your sexuality and your desires with confidence and joy. So sket it. Don't regret it. Whether you are casually dating 
or being sketty in a committed relationship, stay sketacular and just enjoy the ride. Literally. It's time for sketty summer babies. So get ready, get sket, go. Friends, lovers, listeners, there we go. The 10 rules of Sketiquette. Whilst, of course, yes, this episode was intended to be light, it is actually a fucking daily challenge to be a sexually empowered woman or vulva owner. And so, yes, it has a serious undertone because there are so many people who don't feel confident or empowered because society is desperate to drag us down. Another point I'd like to make is this. Being a sket does not mean we would just sleep with you because that's what we do. But thanks for the assumption and apologies for the offence when it's a strong no. And to get serious for a moment, just because a woman or vulva owner embraces her sexuality as a sket doesn't mean she deserves to be on the receiving end of any sexual violence or assault. That is never, ever justified by how someone chooses to live or express themselves. It's a violation of a person's rights and autonomy, plain and simple. We need to reject any idea that links someone's sexual expression to any form of violence or harm. Let's promote a culture where respect, consent and everyone's safety come first. No exceptions. I know we are a long way from that. And of course, the next time a sexually empowered woman is on the receiving end of a sexual assault, the misogynists of the world will scream slut, whore. And this is why to my male and penis owner sket allies call out behavior that condones sket shaming now. Be a stepping stone to making sure your sexually empowered friends are not on the receiving end of sexual violence. Go on, I dare you. But my skets, always know you are not alone. Always know you are deserving of enjoying your sexual empowerment. And if you ever feel doubt creeping in, come back to this podcast because I will always be here to remind you that you are amazing just as you are and to lift you up and create a sketty community where everyone feels confident to be their true selves. To my fellow skets, to my sket allies, I love you. To my sket haters, go and work on your own sex lives and ask yourselves, why you care, what other people do with theirs. Although if you've made it this far into this episode, I think you might be a secret little sket yourself. Friends, lovers, listeners, happy sketty sundress season. I will see you very soon. But for now, go ahead, child, get your sketty on. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Sex on the Peach today and I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. You can find and follow me on Instagram, YouTube and TikTok at Sex on the Peach Cast and you can also get in touch with me at sexonthepeachcast at gmail.com. Please do continue to like, share, subscribe, rate and review wherever you listen to your podcasts and I'll see you next week. Love, Peach.